The sponsor of my stream and podcast is DistroKid. If you want 10% off on your first subscription with DistroKid, release your music to the world on every major music platform. Make sure to go to my website, andrewvanzark.com, and click on the discount link under the tab of DistroKid. Attention Sarkarians, embark on a cosmic journey at www.andrewvanzart.com for saving by clicking on our affiliate tab. Discounts await. Your click not only unlocks deals, but supports the beats and discussions of these stellar radio stations. Atlantic Jetway Radio. Join the Sith and let the unlimited power of the discounts await you in the shopping. And for you musicians to get a discount on DistroKid, www.andrewvanzart.com, your portal to savings. May the discounts be with you. The information on this podcast is my opinion and some internet research. Star Wars, the galaxy's most popular movie, is great family entertainment. Huh? Aren't we listening to Galactic Tower Radio? Uh, What what is this whistling? I, huh? I'm confused. Hosted by Andrew Van Zart. Now you're losing your power. Thank you. Now we can start listening to this show. I was so confused. May the force be with you. <laughs> Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to Galactic Shower Radio. This is your safe spaces to go to Star Wars, music, and other geeky topics. So buckle up as we dissect the latest chapter of The Bad Batch, Season 3, Episode 8, Tensions Rise, as, as The Bad Batch inch toward answers. Alright, get it flowing, let's get it running. I'm actually really excited with this one. Um, seeing Fennec Shan in this one was a really a blast, to be honest, you know? It was really dark, and for those of you that don't like slow episodes, it was a little bit slow, in my opinion, but that's just my my own thoughts on that, you know? So, anyways, why don't we get ourselves diving into it a little more and get ourselves flowing with all this stuff, you know? Um, I love everything that has to do with, you know, The Bad Batch, Star Wars... And all that kind of stuff. So, without further ado, let's get ourselves running with some of that. You know? And if you have anything to say, anything to talk about, anything you want to flow with when it comes to, you know, Star Wars, pop culture, video games, and all that, you can leave it on the chat down below. And I'll be glad to respond as soon as I can, you know. So, let's get ourselves started here. With some Bad Patch discussion of that episode 8, you know. So, this episode is awesome. In many shapes and forms, you know. We'll be dissecting the episode's thrilling moments. Pondering its lingering mysteries. And unraveling the complexities of our favorite clone troopers. You know? So we find ourselves following the interpret hunter and the ever-dependable wrecker. On a Herilius quest to unearth uh, the meaning behind the cryptid M count. You know, their pursuit takes them into a shadowy underbelly. Forcing them to negative treacherous situations. And confront uh, guarded secrets. You know, every step they take... Uh, heightens the suspense, leaving us yearning to understand the truth they're desperately seeking, you know? So, meanwhile, across the galaxy on the tranquil world of Pabu, Crosshair faces a different kind of battle, a battle against his own limitations. We witness a vulnerability we haven't seen before as he struggles to regain control of his injured hand. You know, the internal conflict adds a layer of death to this character. 
you know, making us question the impact these setbacks will have on his future. So, in my opinion, the the lack that we're seeing with Crosshair, it's a huge impact um, on the whole Clone Force 99. Because they're all supposed to be super strong, have all this kind of stuff, and, and all these powers... But yet, seeing Crosshair struggle the way he's struggling is pretty sketchy, in my opinion. Pretty goddamn sketchy. So, as the episode progresses, seemingly dis- uh, disparate, disparate uh, the storyline begins to coverage, culminating in shocking twist. You know, the enigmatic bounty hunter Fennec Shan. Uh, shrouded in an aura of mystery, disrupts Hunter and Wrecker's meticulously planned operations with a cunning maneuver. This unexpected betrayal throws their mission into disarray and leaves us with a cliffhanger that sparks a flurry of questions. What are Fennexian's true motives? How will the Bad Batch overcome these up- obstacles? You know... The, the, the episode excels at wavering and, and, and giving us uh, together these contrasting narratives, you know? Uh, and we're kept on our edge of our seats, for sure, you know, by the thrilling pursuit of truth undertaken by Hunter and Wrecker, while simultaneously being drawn into Crosshair's introspective journey. It's a masterful display of balancing action-packed sequences with moments that delve into the emotional complexities of our clone protagonists, you know? And that that sure is a really strong thing to say, so no, you know? So beyond the central plot, the episode offers intriguing glimpses into the state of the galaxy under the oppressive rule of the Empire. We see the lingering effects of Order 66 and the constant threat clone for cl- clones face under imperial control this adds a layer of context to the bad batch struggle reminding us of the larger conflict they're entangled in you know tension rises as the bad batch uh gets closer and closer to getting some answers you know and it's a compelling exploration of loyalty perseverance and the ever-present threat of betrayal and it leaves us yearning for more. We're eager to witness how the Bat Batch will navigate the fallout of Fennec Shan's treasury and what challenges Crosshair must overcome on his path to recovery. You know, we saw Omega and Crosshair doing their meditative, uh, you know, their meditative pathways. And, and rituals to get things clear. You know, Omega tells him, hey, meditation is a good thing for uh, your mind and to heal you entirely. Not not just the hand, but also mentally, you know. And, and those are things that, you know, have been said and taught through throughout Star Wars this whole time. You know, there's no other way to actually delve into this and get better than by meditating you know and we're intrigued to see what are we are we to expect from you know Fennec Shan Fennec Shan seems kind of sketchy you know at the end of the episode she literally talked about uh, to, in, in a communication with someone that we don't know who the hell it is you know we are still uh, uh, to know who the heck is that person? So, uh, this episode also reignites the debate surrounding, you know, the midichlorians, the M counts, you know, and the, and the connection to these controversial elements of the Force adds a new layer of intrigue t- to the narrative. You know, Omega having such a high count really, really brings a lot to the table. You know, because so far. Who we only knew that had a lot, but a lot of things to to discuss about M Count was Anakin, you know, and having Omega being a, another one with that super high M Count, 
really brings a lot to the table. But then again, they on, they only checked Omega. They haven't checked uh, Crosshair. They haven't checked Hunter. They haven't checked Wrecker or any other Clone Force 99. So there's probably a suspect that every Clone Force 99 character has a high M count. But, you know, we still need to find out whether that be a thing or not. I doubt they're going to, you know, be able to test on Hunter, Wrecker, uh, or anyone else for that matter. I think they're just going to stay with the thought of Omega and they're just going to hunt her down till the end of, of dawn of time, you know. So, it's it's quite controversial, you know. So, will the series uh, dwell deeper into this topic or will it remain a veiled mystery only time will tell you know and only the episodes that have been running so far will let us know if that could be a thing cause you know we have a lot to uh, unveil from that and so many things we can talk about you know so going back to Fennec Shan you know Fennec Shan, Hunter and Wrecker arrived at a marshed field planet you know and uh, which re- re- reminds me a lot of Nal Uta, you know, to hunt the bunny Silar Solaris, nicknamed the Slayer of Ordo Eris. He appeared, he apparently stole some credits from top bosses within the Haxion Brood. You know, this may all sound familiar to you, the ones listening right now. If you've played Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. In the game, Cal Castus is captured and brought to Ordo Eris by the Haxion Brood to fight in a gladiatorial game of Absol's Grease of his, uh, you know, uh, depths, you know. The aunt for Saris goes about how would you expect, you know, the encounter bombs hostile fauna and eventually finds Saris hideout. Fennec takes a somewhat lazy stab at manipulating Hunter and Wrecker into revealing information about Omega. You know, in the process, she reminds viewers that despite her records of working for Nalse to uh, protect Omega, she is just as call outs as and financially driven as the next bounty hunter you know this will come into play later you know and uh, that that's a thing that we have to uh keep in mind in in many shapes and forms you know so you know we we are not to trust Fenexion entirely there's, there's many reasons why not to trust her. Mm-mm. So the much more interesting narrative here, in my opinion, is what's happening on Pabu. You know? Frustrated by his lack of progress, Crosshair is deje- dejected and fears his days as a sniper are over. Omega continues to show emotional intelligence well beyond her age and convinces Crosser to consider the possibility that this injury may be related to um, his mental health, you know? The mental health can be a, a big thing. So, the thing is, the thing is, you know, she tells uh, Crosshair that she learned how to meditate because of Gungi. And we we all met Gungi in terms of Clone Force 99 back. She met Gungi in Season 2. Um, and she spent a lot of time in Kashyyyk. And Crosshair was like, what? You've been to Kashyyyk? So, that is one of the most intriguing things for Crosshair with Omega. Like, what? Kashyyyk? Why would you be there? And then Omega says, there's a lot you've missed. 
There's a lot you've missed. And sometimes you have to, you know, get in touch with things as quick as you can. At least in my opinion. So, maybe they'll catch up with the information to Crosshair. Maybe they'll do what they gotta, what they gotta do, you know? So, Anakin Season 7, Episode 9 of The Clone Wars. What were you doing on Obadiah? You know, illustrating to both characters their younger sister are off blazing their own path and taking their own risks. You know, Omega reminds Crosshair, you've missed a lot. Like I said before, you know, to which he responds, I know, and all our hearts break. Still, the fact that Crosser understand he missed a lot is huge progress. And clearly he's all in now for sure. You know, so uh, having Crosser by the Clone Force 99 side again and away from the Empire's clutches, I think it brings, you know, a lot of things to the table. And I never thought Crosshair would be back. I never thought Crosshair would change his mind. This, for me, is a huge turn of events. Big-ass huge turn of events, in my opinion. So by the time Hunter and Wrecker return to, you know, the space station with Fennec and the capture bunny, it's unclear whether Fennec is going to come through with the information, you know, which he says uh, she has to go out and find Hunter. And Wrecker are forced to trust her, which I wouldn't. You know, I, I freaking wouldn't. In the end, Fennec contacts the mysterious individual and gives them Hunter and Wrecker's location. It appears Fennec has decided it's uh, monetarily in her favor to betray the Bad Batch. And we just can't catch a break at all. So... This episode, again, like I've been mentioning this whole time, did a great job building suspense regarding both the mystery of M Counts and Crosshair's experimentation on Mount Tantus. You know, it can be hard as a committed fan to distance, you know, yourself or myself or whoever's watching from the M Counts, you know, storyline and just enjoy the ride. At times, it feels like we're really shoehorning this mystery into the plot when it should be rather easy to find this answer. That said, I enjoy that they're barely incorporating midichlorians into the narrative at all after they've been, you know, so derivatively dismissed for many years as part of the great prequel backlash. As for Crosshair, I believe we'll find out more about his time on Mount Tantus and how that may or may not connect to the CX assassin. Although, I don't think we necessarily need this. You know, Crosshair's courageous investigation uh, of his own mistakes, trauma, and hopefully recover is a story worth telling all uh, on its own, you know? And um, that's a really interesting thing to note out. And uh, I think that the more we unveil the story of the Bad Batch Season 3, the more we get into these characters that are vaguely being introduced, I think we're going to have a big, 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 big finale and a big story. You know, we're close to the end of the season, I'm pretty sure, because usually seasons of the Bad Batch don't last more than like 10 episodes or, or so. So I think we're just close to the end. And I still don't know what to expect, you know, and I, and I feel, in my opinion, that The Bad Batch Season 3 still has a lot to tell us. And being close to the end of the season really brings me to this conclusion that there's a lot more to, you know, talk about and more to uh, unveil when it comes to the story, you know? So... Those are my thoughts, my my small research to, to get a better idea of the episode because the episode had a lot to take in and I couldn't like really grasp a bunch of the stuff because um, it was too much to take in to watch and literally go straight to do my radio show. So, yeah, 
But anyways, I I think that it wraps it up till here for the uh, recap and all that. And from there, we can move on to other places. So, hope you're having a great time. Hope you have understood a little bit more about the Bat Batch. And that you are closer into understanding the world of Star Wars a bit more. Every minute is a closer place to the galaxy far, far away. And what better place to be in than Galactic Chuckle Radio where you can actually understand Star Wars in a more casual way. You know, I, I'd rather not have the toxicity that Star Wars usually brings to the table in many shapes or forms. So that's, that's just... Uh, my honest opinion here and i don't want to have it changed any other way so just just the thought you know just the thought but anyways i'll catch you on the flip side adios amigos bye The sponsor of my stream and podcast is DistroKid. If you want 10% off on your first subscription with DistroKid, release your music to the world on every major music platform. Make sure to go to my website, andrewvanzark.com, and click on the discount link under the tab of DistroKid. Unite for the sound revolution in Galactic Chakra Radio. Support Anna Ranzark's original tunes, the polls of our online radio station, and keep the news blazing like Beskar. Click, donate, and hit that PayPal button, and join the watch. Keep the tunes alive. This is the way.